All right, all right. So good evening, everyone. And it's Friday. <laughs> really excited about it. it's Friday. I had a, such a long season. I got two shows left. And tonight's show is just going to be off the hook, right? Great show happening tonight. Uh, first of all, thank you for my studio audience who's chiming in as we're starting to show up. I appreciate everybody for being here. Um, really excited about tonight's guest. He's actually one of my really good friends, and we're going to chop it up. But let's start out with the uh, reality check of the day. Reality check of the day is negative comments on posts, all right? Let me give you an idea. We all get people that we don't know posting negative stuff on our posts all the time because we all know it's easier to put down somebody than say, hey, great job. So when you guys are posting, if it's something meaning for, to, for you or whatever, and somebody that you don't know posts something that's obnoxious, negative, you can do one or two things. Either delete it or leave it so everybody else can read it and see how obnoxious this person is. Because the minute you get into a conversation with that person, even if you're right, you're going to lose every time. Because somebody who goes in on like that for no reason whatsoever pretty much has a pretty bad day going on for them right now and it doesn't matter what kind of conversation you have it's just gonna end bad and to save yourself stress laugh at it ignore it or delete it that's my reality check for the day all right so all you people that are posting negative comments that is my positive flip around on how we're going to deal with your ass on a daily basis i'm just saying Right, so season two is starting in the third week of June. We have a lot of people already being booked, a lot of celebrities. Celebrities are bigger and better. Uh, anybody out there know celebrity, you are a celebrity, you like to be on the show, and it's from all industries. Just go to bookings at facetime.com, and we also are getting sponsors as well coming through. So, having a great time with this, right? Now, as always, my man Hector Camacho Macho Jr., it's macho time, he's going to be fighting. Julio Cesar Chavez, June 19th in Mexico in the football stadium. It's a celebrity tribute to the greats. And the undercard is going to be Anderson Silver. And that's going to be versus Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. I, 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 see, I can't speak because I forgot I got gum in my mouth. Don't ever do that when you're a talk show host, having gum. All right? Now, huge announcement. Tonight was supposed to be my last show, which is an honor for who I'm having. But I got a call. From these guys right here, all right? We all saw the DMX Memorial service. It was amazing. These guys called me up. They loved the show. They said they want to come on. So this Sunday, I got the DMX Monster Truck Memorial crew that put this whole entire thing together. And we're going to chop it up. 7 p.m. this Sunday, it's going to be Remembering DMX and Sunday's Family Day Memorial, the whole nine. So it's the best day to do it. So I'm looking forward to talking with these guys now. Speaking about talking to a great guy, I have a great guy coming on, and I'm going to play this clip right now if you guys missed it. I'm going to get my head out of the way, and I'm also going to bring him in while I'm doing this, and then I'm going to chop it up with this man. So guys, I hope you guys like it, because me and him did this together, and on Facebook it had 10,000 views and a whole nine, but we wanted to reshow it again. So guys, check this out. Good evening. I'm Todd Ward. Breaking news tonight. Is out again. But this time... He's doing his rendition of Seinfeld for the Wayne Bennett Band, and none other than the Village People's hit song, YMCA. Let's go live and to the county stage. <laughs> I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> That's right. You're never too old to have fun. So guys, please welcome music icon, amazing guy, former and original member of the legendary village people, Mr. Felipe Rose. Felipe, how you doing, brother? Hey, Todd. Happy Friday. Good Friday. Happy first Happy season. Friday. Cheers. <laughs> That's right. Wait, I got mine. I gotta hold on, hold on. I gotta get to you. I got uh I got a little bit of a like uh like a Hennessy like uh ginger ale type of thing. Taste oh no. Soda. So, I have a I have a cucumber cucumber margarita. Cucumber margarita yeah. and Hennessy ginger ale. Salute. So a great season. That DMX yes. that DMX 
uh, monster truck. That was something to behold. I saw a lot of computers and, uh, you know, God rest the MX. I mean, a true legend, uh, historic. The, this, this, the way it went through the neighborhood, it was just, it, 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 well, say, to say the least that it would look like an attraction, but it wasn't. Yeah. It was like, okay, they're, they're, they're moving this pharaoh through, like they say, like they would do things like that in Egypt. Back then, oh, I know. You know, it's crazy. So it was starting people to see this during this time that we're still in. Yeah, and people don't realize. I was speaking to Carl Schaff, great security guard for the stars. Uh, he's the one that put me in touch with these guys, and they called me up. They're doing all the shows from Inside Edition, GMA, and they called me like, "Todd, we want to be on the show. We just love what you're doing." And I was honored when when I was speaking to them, and we're going to talk about it. People don't realize that they drove a monster truck. From Yonkers. Yeah, but look at the lady, right? They're not even driving. I'm sure they brought it in on the truck. Yeah, so they had a police escort from Yonkers all the way through. And I'm just like, damn, okay. You got some pull out there. I'm loving that. I'm loving that. Well, listen, um, this is my last regular show of the season. That's more of like a DMX honoring instead of have you on my last regular show. Is a complete honor. Not only are you a music icon, but honestly, you're one of my best friends. And to have you on my show, we, we talk, talk almost every it. day. We talk almost every day. Almost Thank you. Every Thank day. you. Yeah. No, I'm honored. I thought I was going to be on the first couple of episodes. Damn, you you have me on the to the last day. Okay, all right, it's good. I'll take it. It's on you a good Friday. I felt I felt I had to build up my presence, and if I'm good enough. To bring you on the show, Todd, and then you'll, always, Todd you'll always be good enough. <laughs> oh, damn. All right, I need oh. to explain to everyone the the video that they just saw. That video yeah. we did that in November, early, uh, late October, uh, as a, 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 a comedy parody, a parody about the 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 head scratcher, you know, Trump and YMCA. Like, how did those two collide, right? And right. so you called me two days ago and you said, listen, I need another favor. I need for you to, like, if you're laying across your bed and just say, you know, I'm too old for this shit. And I said, well, actually, I happen to be laying across my bed naked. <laughs> and so, <laughs> uh, you know, you were like, okay, let me back. Just, just videotape it from the waist up. And that, and that was that. That piece is, was just added. Oh, it was but so good. Like, asking you shall receive. <laughs> yeah, and I appreciate that. And I got there at the right time, too. It's just those little pieces can add such a difference to the video. And we got to give some love to Arson Bortnick, who shot and edited that video. Yeah. Uh, he did such a great job. Um, love that guy. Today. I love working with him. He's so quiet, and then everything is in his mind, and he's sort of like, well, just explain the scene. And you just like look at him and like, okay. And, and he, it's fast. He works very fast. Yeah, and he's great. And what we proved right there um, because on Facebook we had over 10,000 views and uh, some copyright thing came up, which it wasn't. It was a parody. It was a parody, right. right. But you want to know something? It, we had Kevin Hart make, made a comment on it. Uh, Tiffany Haddish loved it. Who well, now Tiffany Haddish is working with one of my partners on her new video, which is Fate is Fate. But it proves right there that you don't need a full crew to make something amazing because we literally had three people. It was me, you, and Arson. The street creative minds came together. The studio, we had the kid, the kid that did the green screen. Oh, oh that, was, uh, uh, that was you. We were two. <laughs> With the wig on. And then Darcy said, get closer, Felipe, because you really have to wait a jump on him. And there was like a bunch of mattresses over where we were going to land. And so we got closer and Todd said, no, that's too close. Arson said, no, 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 it's close enough. And he said, an action. And I jumped you. And he said, <laughs> cut. Okay, right? And so he moves on to the next shot and I'm still laying on top of you and you're trying to get up and I'm not letting you. <laughs> 
I kept I kept going on my phone like, yo, can you guys get the sexual harassment attorney of Dr. Cuomo, please? I said, let me just stay here because this will be the only time I'll ever get that close. <laughs> Yo, that was uh, the most weirded out experience. You know what's funny, looking back at that whole situation with that video, is that the copyright infringement thing about the song, actually, it's hilarious because I'm in that group. <laughs> or was yeah, it? That, that, that was or one of these that part. group. Yeah, first of all, the, the, you're in the group. There was no copyright infringement, and we took it off the Trump video itself, and it's like, okay, you know, but, but, but that weekend, then Saturday Night Live, while you were at my house, they did their yeah. parody of the, of the, their parody of the, of the village people, but they left me out, which was politically correct to do today. Right. You know, there was, right. now, don't throw, just throw any native in there, and it's native, mm -hmm. not Indian, okay, like they used to say in the 70s, it's native, or N- DN is the acronym, you know, made it to all the Latinos and Latinx and all my LGBT fans out there. I'm sending you lots of love. But that, but that situation with that video, uh, the, uh, the Saturday Night Feed Live, Saturday Night Live did a parody of it and they did the yeah. song called Cease and Desist and it was hilarious. And we're, and we were just filming the day before and then that comes on and you just looked at me like, Okay. It, was so, it was so sweet and awesome how we just filmed, like you just said. And I went to your house because we had a lot of work to do. So I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to stay over. I'm in. I'm out here. It's way out of my house. And we're sitting there watching SNL. It just came on. And we're like, yo, this is the perfect time for us to put that video out. And it yeah, was it was perfect. Out. The timing was perfect. And we had a lot of fun. And then we actually got finally got to work together on a project. And there will be many more. Um, oh, yeah. and, you know, I, I, he, uh, people don't know I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm as big as a clown as Todd is, you know, I'm just right. love having a great time, you know, it's free. Well, speaking of great times, let's talk about a lot of the stuff that you're doing and you're talking about project. Let's get into the new project that you took on, which I think it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Because whenever, whenever somebody tries to take on a show, um, they don't realize there's a lot of thought process that goes into it, and it has to be perfect for the person doing it. Just because you want to be a talk show host doesn't mean that you can be a talk show host. Right. But tell people what you chose to do. I think it's perfect. It's in your lane, and you know everybody in this category. So tell them about it. Well, then, thank you. The, thanks for that setup. The name of the show is actually a podcast show. I'm, And when I say podcast show is that – it's, it's, it's videotaped and filmed on a Zoom call with the person I'm interviewing, and then that's recorded. And then we move it into the editing phase where we will bring pictures in about what, uh, the, the subjects and things that we're talking about of the disco era. The, the show is called The Disco Chronicles, hosted by yours truly, Felipe Rose. And if there's anything that I don't know about disco, then you know then it's embarrassing then those things behind me shouldn't be there you know i mean uh uh it's embarrassing so and what i don't know be, because i've been throwing around the idea with my uh my team and you and i discussed you know me doing a podcast like a few years ago and yeah. i'm very pragmatic i want to think of something long and i want to be sure that if I'm to execute it and to do it and do it well, is to make sure that I have all my ducks in a row and that the show, it comes out as a show, not a podcast, and it'll be on my Felipe Rose fan club YouTube page. So when the whole thing airs and everything gets placed up on the channel, I'll I'll eventually bring it to uh to Instagram in, in like maybe 20, 20 minute segments because it's forty five minutes. It's a, it's it's long. Um, so yeah. the name of the show actually have, came to be that uh, after the celebrity cruise that I did in February of 2020 um, with about another 25 other acts, George McRae, Franjo Lee, Linda Clifford, Martha Walsh, Tra Travaris, I mean, uh, Demi Terrio. Uh, the, the list just went on and on. They added me to the nighttime, the evening portion of the show. Nice. Which was good, and it was at the club on the ship. You have to imagine 3,500 people and 2,700 crew 
um, almost over 5,000 people on a cruise for five days with parties going on and old decks and theaters and constellation room. And then where do they go to let the steam out? After they eat dinner and everything, they go back or they change or they keep going with their evening and they would end up at the Studio 54 portion of the evening where the restaurant literally was transformed with the dance floor lit and, and I was with the uh, legendary DJ from Studio 54, uh, DJ uh, Nikki Ciano. And so mm -hmm. the irony was I had to go on at one thirty, but I work better at night. <laughs> Not an afternoon performer. And so that's where everyone then would come to the show. I had two shows there with dancers and whatever. You did a 20-minute set. So it was just really great. Like, we really being in the, in the thick of that. And the minute I returned, I thought, you know, I had such a blast. I think I want to make my show longer. And uh, then COVID came. And so I was getting ready to go to Brooklyn the following week, uh, the next week to Brooklyn for the uh, Brooklyn Academy of, of Art, uh, of the uh, installation of the... Uh, uh, event of Studio 54, the display, the whole um, thing that they were they were doing, and then a lot of stars lined up to go, and uh, and then the pandemic came and shut everything down, and that's when disco made such a huge come comeback. It literally, mm -hmm. uh, the group was inducted into the uh, what is it called, the uh, Library of Congress, YMCA. Mm -hmm. uh, Dua Lipa bounced with her levitation. Very disco song. So does uh, yeah. the Korean group BK7. Is that, is that their name? BK7? Yeah, I think so. And their their song also, disco, and then Donna Summer remixes. And that's when I decided that, you know, since disco is made so strong right now and really hasn't gone anywhere, I'm going to call the show The Disco Chronicles. So we just did the first episode, and it, tomorrow morning it will be on the YouTube channel, Felipe Rose fan club on YouTube and uh, and then the other exciting music by the way he Todd did the logo for the for my show. Thank you sir. Right? Um, oh, and, and now the, 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 the next exciting piece of news is uh, a new single. And I'm excited yeah, about, about that. Yeah you almost finished with it right you're mastering it right now. We it's have good. another uh, one one mix I have to go in and mix the vocals from the girl that two weeks ago, uh, I'm waiting for everyone's schedule for people to just say, that's what takes long. Um, right. And get her vocals. They were already retransferred to my producer, Tyler Safran. And so we'll mix her like church vocals, rips. Um, she gave us four tracks and we'll drop her vocals here and there do a proper mix down, then we'll go into the uh, the second week of May, we will be in the recording studio at Lake House Recording Studios to get a really oh, wow. proper mix on a large board, 48 tracks, maybe even more, and get a really proper mix and levels that we want, to, and then we send it out to get it mastered. Wow. Yeah, but then the real work begins, and then, uh, you know, CD artwork, uh, what am I going to wear? What am I going to look like? I'm not going to get dressed. Well, I love being a biracial and love my native roots and, you know, love my Puerto Rican Italian mother and all that. And this next thing, like the guy behind you, I don't want to look like that. I want to kind of do, it's most likely going to, it's probably going to revolve around an, ur an urban kind of an urban funk wear with, with maybe some native pieces of jewelry included bandana but i don't want i'm like this is a different felipe a new felipe felipe on his own uh 40 years with the village people that's nothing to sneeze about no sometimes I, I still can't believe it i have out of body experiences when i think about moments and flashbacks and yeah i mean speaking of flashbacks um i i've i've had the pleasure to hear a lot of stories out the dinners just a lot of great ones you have a couple of great stories that I think people love because, first of all, Queen is, like the Village People, is definitely one of the most iconic groups ever, right, with Freddie Mercury. Now, you have a story with Freddie Mercury, right? which I think... Yeah, well, well, we were talking about uh, for, uh, the we were talking about the movie Bohemian Rhapsody with the yeah. actor uh, Rami Malik. 
And then I said to you, oh, yeah, I used to hang out with, with, Mer with Freddie. And mm -hmm. I'm in the London Terrace. And, you know, there were a, a bunch of us in London, you know, going out at night with him. And, um, and I, don't, I don't really remember where we left and where we went. But when I woke up in the morning at the hotel, uh, it wasn't my hotel. I looked <laughs> over and there was Freddie laying there asleep. And I thought, <laughs> like, what? Let me start touching things around, and let me see. Was I violated? <laughs> I got I started getting up, and he woke up. He said, "Where are you going, Dolly?" I said, "I'm leaving." Did anything happen? He said, "No, we fell asleep." <laughs> He's like, he's smiling with the two shirts like teeth. Oh, my God. Like, great like, guy, great guy. He just loved her life. I took him to the scene when he came to New York with David Hodo and a bunch of other people. In fact, I've been hearing a, a lot from friends from the past that are telling me, yeah, you took me to the Saint, which was on 2nd Avenue. A lot of people don't know about the Saint. The Saint, mm -hmm. um, when the, all the bars were closing, the Saint opened in 19, I, I don't know exactly the date, but it was yeah. a theater. And you and all our industrial cages and, and staircases and, you know, with lofts of places to sit, uh, water bar, no liquor. And you w walked upstairs to through the different floors, uh, all of this industrial staircases that led you up to the very top of the floor. And you walked into, into a giant dome like the Hayden Planetarium. Planetarium. And there was this tall machine, the light machine, that cascaded planets going by. And, you thought the room was levitating and moving, but but it wasn't. You were still on the on the dance floor, but it was the effect of the entire dome. And you, there were like five thousand people in there at times. I mean, it was amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, so, you know, I think that um, we 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 Bohemian Rhapsody. You know, again, it was such a great movie. And I can't believe that I told you that story and shared it just now. But he was a fun guy. I mean, he loved the Saint, and that was pretty much the last time I saw him. Yeah, like, I don't think people realize sometimes, like, I'm speaking to an icon now, but all these icons back then were always around each other. Um, different shows, supporting each other on, on a lot of shows. We're all on the same TV the shows, right, right, Top mm -hmm. of the Pop. Um, yeah, uh, same thing in Germany, Music Laden, where um, like a, on a full weekend, because you were there three days in, in Music Laden. It was a, a, a huge television network. And Music Laden was the big number one show in Germany and throughout Europe. And so on a weekend, you had like Tina Turner, Bonnie Raitt, uh, The Village People. Um, my God, the, the names just went on and on um Susie Quattro you know all of everyone hanging around all weekend and then they would call you and you would they you perform and they do lights and now we, and you were done and the second day they do sound and the third day costume and we're ready and get dressed and your stage gear and then shoot the show live so it was like a, a full weekend with all of these stars we all got to know one another and hang out with each other and then wow. from there I you know I can't I can't believe someone stole my picture a huge eleven by fourteen of Tina Turner and I from a party in a loft in Manhattan that I gave and it just was taken off the wall but I flew with Tina from uh, Frankfurt to London on a flight um, gave her my window seat <laughs> in first class so you know she was happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was excellent. It was wonderful. It was like a moment I'll never forget. And and I think Randy Jones, he may have a negative to that. He turned around with his 35 millimeter and said, smile. And we just put our faces together. And it was just one of those very relaxing moments, zen moments with her. Um, wow. And we talked about um, Buddhism and, you know, being a kind person and having love in your heart and walking with, 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 with tranquility and leaving things behind because you present yourself. Her philosophy is you present yourself 
because she she pulled this up out of something that was so dark. In fact, the documentary oh, yeah. on what is yeah, it? I mean, the documentary is on HBO. Yeah, Angela Bassett played. Tina no, Turner. the new one. No, the new last new documentary now on Tina Turner. Um, I, I think it's uh, it's probably Disney. I'm, I'm sort of one of your followers. I'll look it up. Um, but she pulled herself out of like a complete life, a, a different life into this new life. And what she said to me that weekend is, "You walk as you present yourself, and you know the way you want people to see you." And I'll never forget that. Can you see yeah, me? She, I don't yeah, see anybody. Yeah, yeah, we can see you. Okay, I, yeah. where are your peeps? My, my peeps are here, man. We can oh, see they're going to show some love? There's, they've been showing love. That's what I was about to say. First of all, let's thank our virtual audience coming in and out. That's always how this goes. It keeps popping in and out. We're speaking with Felipe and Rose of the Village people, formerly original. Yeah. Um, you can follow me on my Instagram at Felipe and Rose Official. Very easy. Follow me at Todd Wharton Official. We're both official people. Uh, so definitely going out. So in the meantime, um, out of all the performances that you've ever done, um, what was, can you really think of one performance where you were just on stage, you got the butterflies, you felt the chills, you were just in the moment where you're like, mm, this is the best feeling I've ever had in my life. Do you think of a moment that that happened on stage? Well, there are many moments. Uh, there are many moments. Uh, I think if one could, as possibly as in Sydney, Australia, at seven o'clock in the morning, we performed in, in the uh, uh, music grounds. The day before was Pride. <laughs> so these people have been up all night into the morning. And we arrived and we were brought in and we were wearing like glitter versions of us, of our outfits. And um, these people, you know, they're up all night, high as hell, but loving life. And we came on and gave them a medley of our hits. And I saw the, the, and what, the, what, the moment that you're talking about that I just made me uh, I really appreciate everything and gratitude was there were people crying. You know, maybe, yes, there was a combination of what they were drinking and anything they took and were influenced, but, the, but the, because of the moment and, and, and how they saw us, um, it, that was sensational as well. But there were lots of there were lots of fun, fun gigs that we did. Uh, we were we share. We would share for almost a year. Oh, I has her opening act. That was that was great. That's something you got in. What's that? that would be, that's somebody I would love to do. She's yeah. very cool. Yeah, no, she's very cool. And uh, um, uh, we were out with her for about. Um, maybe five, six months, and then they were heading off to, or maybe a little longer, they were heading off to uh, New Zealand and then Australia. But we told our people that we couldn't go to New Zealand because we uh, had a Christmas show with Casey and the Sunshine Band in Florida with several dates. So mm -hmm. the funny thing was <laughs> that every night while she was in New Zealand, she would do. She always does her makeup. She's doing her makeup, and she as she asked, she asked, "Where are the boys? Where are the boys?" And they oh, yeah. and they would say, "Oh, they're in Florida. We told you they're not. They're not playing." Second night, third night, where are the boys? And they're like, "They're in Florida with with KC." Um, the 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 hilarious thing is that when we finally did meet her in 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 Mardi Gras. All she did was, well, it's about fucking time. That's the greeting that we got from her. She has a potty mouth. She's fun. She's fun that way. I can imagine. I can imagine. Now, the great thing about your music, and we started seeing this in the more of the 80s, you guys started tapping into movies. And in the 90s, um, I believe it's the 90s movies, you got into one of my favorite comedic movies, which was um, uh, Periscope Down, I think it's called. Uh, uh, Down Periscope. Down Periscope. Well, you guys did a couple of theme songs. You guys sang on that submarine with everybody. How is that being on a movie set with all those great people as well? Because now it's a different type of scene. It's not, but now you're with like Amy Smart, and you know I'm jealous now because you were. What's her name? Hunter. What was it? Uh, uh, 
from Fraser? The girl, no, that was in the in the in the movie. Uh, uh, the blonde, the blonde, the blonde Amy Holly Smart. something. Amy Smart was blonde. Believe me, I'm a guy. I know oh, you know, right. okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we be Kelsey Grammer and I became really good friends on that first break of the second day when we were heading back to the hotel. And it was the more, and the, the next day we were going to be sh shooting inside a real submarine, which is very narrow and very long. And it was not, it was a very tight quarters. But, he, you know, we, we got, we, the day went fast. We were back by seven. And he said, why not, have you, want to have a martini with me? And I said, well, what kind? He said, a dirty martini, my good man. And I said, no, I've never had one. He said, well, come and let's have one. And I had like five. It was the big, dirty, uh, uh, absolute martinis with big olives with blue cheese. It was insane. Oh, yeah. I had the biggest headache in the world. Then another guy that was great to hang out with was Rob, the comedian. Rob Schneider from SNL. Right. Yeah. We, he had a club in San... We were in San Francisco. He had a club in San Francisco. It's one of these loft clubs, you know, where the famous DJs go there, main DJs, and he... he took us there and then he walked out on the stage and the crowd just flipped out and then he brought us out and, and there were about four or five of us and they, and uh, once again you know it wasn't like he asked he said would you sing would you sing for them and we said why not you know give it back pass it forward pay it forward and we did YMCA they freaked out they loved it yeah, that song uh, that song raises the dead oh my god YMCA has got to be top 10 most famous songs in the history of music. It has to be. Because everybody knows it. You hear it at every single function. I mean, you hear it at weddings. You hear it at Bar Mitzvah. I ended up I singing, mean, it, I ended ended up singing it last night at Frankie Previs' birthday party. Yeah. Piano. Piano. Yeah. The, 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 I'm blessed that, you know, we have that. That, that's, oh, oh, that, that money of, of the song will come in for the rest of your life. Um, yeah. And that's speaking, you know, uh, an honor that I had the time of 40 years that I really thought that I think I made a difference while I was in the group. But last night at Frankie Previs birthday party, uh, out here in uh, 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 so the Jersey Shore, Frankie Previs wrote uh, Time of My Life oh, for Dirty Dancing. So we were at his home. And uh, you know how musicians get. When they're all together and everything in the talking is over, you can only talk but so much. And all the guests, they were all vaccinated, which was tremendous. Um, so it was, everybody was, was happy to see each other. But during the jam session, like one guy started playing the chord of the song and it, like, it was just instinct. Instinct just kicked in. But I, I, low, I lowered that, I said, slow it down. So I sang YMCA for Frankie as a ballad. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, awesome. yeah. By the way, you There's no need like to like feel it. down. I said, young man, keep <laughs> yourself off the ground. And they were, everybody was like, okay, we get that. We get that. Well, we got to show some love right now to definitely our virtual audience, and especially some that just came in. We got DJ Diamond, the artist from EPMD, is here right now. Mr. Ferrari, Slubby the Cabby to the Stars is here. Hey. And Miss Melbourne. Miss Melba Moore just signed on. Oh, I love Melba. Melba. Melba was down in Asbury Park for the uh, mayor's ball, and she mm -hmm. stayed at the uh, Ty's Hotel. So she was oh, yeah. she was the queen that weekend. <laughs> oh, I can. She imagine. was queen there. She's always been fabulous from the day. I love today's uh, uh, Melba's post of Lola Falana dancing. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't know. I mean, she was cool. amazing in, in Vegas and on Broadway. I don't know if she's still around, but thank you, Melba, for posting that uh, that piece, that black and white piece of uh, video of Lola Falana dancing. Yeah, Melba is so sweet, and she was such a pleasure to interview as well, which is crazy. By the way, going back to your song, I um, I, I, I wore her, her songs out, her disco song. So just saying, yeah. like I wore it out. That's somebody you, you should definitely get on Chronicles because I'm good friends with her manager. That yes, yes, yes. 
Yeah, I'm going to give that to you because his name's Ron Richardson, great guy, and uh, I'll definitely get that to you ASAP. Speaking of your song that you have coming out with, um, there is talks from what I hear that there may be a video in the works. Now, the best thing is they're talking COVID's going to be pretty much up. They're going to open up things in July, and that's where you, I think I was hearing that you might want to do shooting now. I think it would be awesome to do an open casting call, let people come through, get to the beach. I, I think it would be an amazing, perfect time for you to shoot that outdoor video that you're looking to do. What do you think about that? Um, it is in the talks. Um, and basically, the that was the time frame that um, I had in mind, uh, not just because COVID, because in July, we're opening up. New York, July 1st, New York is open 100%. That's amazing. Um, and New Jersey is following fast, and a lot of the state is mostly is all, you know, vaccinated, and those that don't want to, you know, well, they have to stand over there, you know, and I'll keep my mask on. I'm not going to be rude to you. Um, but, you know, um, I'm protected. I want us to be back, and we'll never come back the way we did the way we were, you know, uh, prior to the pandemic. So the release is going to be sometime in late, ju late, late June, hopefully a 4th of July release on iTunes, Spotify, um, cover, hopefully all that done. What I would love, because the song is called Dance Again, and it's about what we did not do in 2020. We didn't dance again. Yeah. And the hook and the chorus is so on the money that you're right. I, I visualize and see people dancing on the street because um, it's a, I love it. I, I, I can't wait for everyone to hear it. I, you've heard it. I sent you a copy. And, yeah, I think it's and hopefully Arson will be okay. thinking. I see Flash Mob. And you could have a, with an open dance call like that, I would love to still have a small team of flash mob dancers that will be there so that everyone's walking around pretending like they're going on with their day. You know how flash mob starts. One person jumps out in the middle of the street or uh, a corner, and then 10, 5, 10 people join in. Then I'm in there, and I, of course, I would have to know the choreography, but something on the street where I just we can get people to, to dance again. You know, and, and this yeah. is the perfect Melba, summer. This is the perfect summer for it. Yeah, and Melba, even, Melba just wrote, you know, we all have to be safe, which I 100% agree with her. And Melba, you got to be on this man's show. I'm going to call Ron for you and set that up because you guys are two great people. He's got his own show called Disco Chronicles. You weren't here when we talked about it, but he's talking with all the disco legends from everywhere. And obviously you have to be one of those. Of course, yeah. Show. You know, so gonna, no, but, 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 but going back to the video, I mean, you know, uh, yeah. assuming that everything is, is well and everyone is uh, safe, I don't really want, uh, you know, I'm still leery going out. You know, I, I even though I'm vaccinated, I keep my mask on when I'm out. And last night at the party, uh, at Frankie's party and Lisa Sherman's party, um, everyone that was vaccinated, and you know, everyone was fine, and they made that very clear that they were. And she made it, you know, as a request, if you are, if you aren't, you know, then you'll have to leave your mask on. Well, you're not going to go to a party to leave your mask on. Well, then stay home. And a lot of people did, and out of respect, they did, which I think is great. And then the people that were there, the 75 people that were there, we had such a blast. Uh, the champagne, I hit it a little too hard. So, so getting, what, 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 getting what, through man? a song was a little difficult. <laughs> Yo, what's up, man? I don't get no invitation to 75 people on champagne. Oh, what, what's my up? God. Like, what's uh, up? No, listen, that was my first part. That was my first party in over a year and a half, man. Being around Damn, people. Man. I wouldn't wear, I mean, Mr. Ferrari's got me going to Tom Hanks' party soon. What's up, man? Okay, now. You know what? Yo, I'm going to show up at Tom Hanks' house with the orange basketball and be like, yo, I found Wilson, and he looks pissed off. Look at how tan he got. You left him out there too long. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. You're insane, Tom. Um, you know, can I just tell your followers, can I just tell your followers, your, your fans, and everyone watching, that 
it's not so much the people that are on his show and the things they talk about, but also he does these pre-bumper uh, little mini mini stories leading up to the show about who's going to be on it. And this guy is on the street laying on the cars and <laughs> running away from women, ripping their breasts off and unscrewing off a leg. <laughs> Your research is good. Your editing is smooth. And no, I think thank you. And you know it's a parody because I don't run away from women. I, I'm, I'm. Let's just keep it real. Well, you needed, it you needed something to end that video that you just played. You said, I need something from you. I need one more thing. Yeah, what? I need a exactly. little video of you just saying, I'm too old for this shit. And if you're laying down on the bed, I'm already laying down. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's a funny thing that we go through a lot. Me and Felipe talk a lot, friend and business all the time. We talk about it every day. We talk strategies, thing, different strategies, and how to get to work. Yeah. Everything. But a funny thing that happens all the time, we keep forgetting. I talk to you a lot when you're driving, and you, I'll be like, where are you going? And you're like, oh, I'm going to Delhi. I'll be like, okay. And then 10 minutes later, you're like, son of a bitch. I'm like, what's going on? And you're like, <laughs> Every time I talk to you, I'm like four miles ahead. I missed my turn. Oh, I missed the exit. I missed the exit. Yeah, you you know, it, we, we, we get engaged. We get we engage in what we're talking about and we're in such agreement and and that sounds great and oh yeah, that person's fascinating also. Um, what I love about my my life now after village people is that now I have a life. Like I sacrificed a lot. For 40 years going out on the road and no birthdays and, you know, even funerals and this and that. And and now I'm enjoying life um, and, and taking advantage of the fact that now I can work with, work and, and, and work on my projects uh, professionally and respectfully because I'm, in, I'm enjoying what I do. But the people that I've met along the way now, it's nice to finally stop and say hello you know and and yeah and have a conversation because that was always go 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 i gotta go i gotta go so you know life now is uh i'm blessed and, and, and you know more focused i'm not in such a rush anymore i don't have a lot of talking heads over here in the ear where you know you have to let your own thoughts be your guide and and your gut feeling if you don't have gut feeling then if people that don't have that, then, you know, they have to search and find. There are people that have it, and that's a gut a feeling that you should never lose. And I've been told several times, I believe you said it too, and that's good gut. You have a good gut feeling, you know. Yeah, um, a good heart. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the last the last three years were were a little tumultuous, were tumultuous with, the, with the litigation and all that situation of the parting of the two groups. You know, and I thought I was going to lose my mind. But once again, thank God for music. Music took me and brought me back because yeah. I could have you seen know what? Focus on that, that dark energy and want to sue each other, go right ahead. It wasn't about me anyway. It was about two ex lead singers, two singers. I got caught in the middle. They both wanted me. I said, you know what? I had a long run. I had a good time. Thank you for the use of the hall. Yeah. And then you know what? what do I do? I get back into music. And for my fan base, I then right. recorded. It took a while, like a, a couple of weeks, to 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 find the perfect song for what I wanted to say. So we, I looked into Odyssey's uh, "Going Back to My Roots" by uh, Narada Michael Walden, who I happen to know, and um, and so I did a a, a, a souped up uh, native dance version of it and it actually won a Native American Music Award which now became my fifth award so during that whole storm I come out of this with music and let and let music and love just guide me through life you know and and be uh, prayerful and and you know and try to be as kind as you can along the way although sometimes Oh, yeah. <laughs> One thing I did learn about the pandemic, and I only said it a few weeks ago, maybe after last night, you know, maybe my feelings changed, but I told you that the pandemic basically made me realize how much I don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> but we were locked now for a year, you know? So, you know, Mr. Cheerios over there. 
And uh, I, I'm actually writing this parody as we speak <laughs> about that, where you know, a lot of couples are pretty much forced to stay with each other for the year. I mean, me, I had to go a different route. But what's going to end up happening is, is when the pandemic is up, the the, the, the guy's going to be like, man, I, I've gotten to know you so much. I really love being with you. And the girl's got to turn around and be like, listen, the <laughs> pandemic's over. Get your ass out of my house. Get out. Take a walk. You still here? You still here? Still here? <laughs> really? It would um, be crazy. No, there were, there were couples that made it and then couples that didn't. I'm, I don't know, a few couples that didn't. They didn't make it. Yeah. You know? Well, let's just take the record straight because you were talking about something, but you kind of went right into the middle. Explain right now, let's set the record straight about the village people now. Because there's a little confusion, and you were talking about it, but I don't think so many people actually understood what you were talking about. You were battling between certain people. Well, the two groups. Well, the the one group I was with, uh, the actually singer then came and he won his rights for his music, and then eventually uh, the ex producers that owned the trademark name they lost that. They lost uh, fifty five percent of the music publishing. So the ex lead singer retained all that. And then suddenly said, well, I might as well take the group because the group is nice. It's a nice cash cow. But the fact was that the, 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 the group that I was with and the guys that I was with, we were like a machine. We were lean. We were dancing. We were singing. It was full on. You know, it was disciplined life. You know, but I said, I don't want to be a part of that. And so I just pulled, pulled away. Take me out of the lawsuit. Um, got another lawyer, and uh, they went at it, and they battled, and then the guys I used to be with became the Kings of Disco, formerly known as the Village People, and then the x League singer put up a brand new vi Village People with an Asian construction worker. Not that I have anything against Asians. Um, I thought that was an interesting pick. Um, and then some guy that says that he's my brother, and I have no brother. <laughs> Nikki Seattle made sure that well, when yeah. the year before last, they were on the ultimate disco cruise, the ship, um, and people were like not happy at all. Oh, I can imagine. You know, so the and thing is that to make to set the story, I'm so I'm now solo. I've been solo since two seventeen since since that situation ended. And you know what? I think that it was better the way. I have no regrets. The way it ended, I needed to be pushed out. I was there just enjoying the cash of traveling the world, making money, and everything was fine. Everything was not fine because when you're with people that you're in business with, and if they don't really practice their A game and, and get that hustle, extra hustle going and be more on it and on it, it's sort of like everyone got comfortable. And that's why that thing happened. And they allowed it. And you don't go after something you can't win. So when you go and litigate, the money that you're expecting to get after a settlement, it drops. So you keep litigating, it keeps dropping, and they end up with nothing. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, only the lawyers money. make money. Exactly. You know, yeah. so it's a, such a waste of time, such a waste of energy, that all of that energy can be turned into some just kindness and love. And um, when the pandemic with COVID-19 hit, um, you know, like everyone, I found myself isolated, and I said, "Well, let me relegate myself to to the internet, to face to Facebook, and to Instagram and TikTok." And so, and it was entertained by all the DJs playing, you know, everyone doing shows, and I'm just like, "Oh, grateful!" and doing tip in the tip jars, Todd, sending out. Uh, packages and cooking and, and sending stuff out to friends and what have you but um got so carried away in the first quarter of the year that my book my bookkeeper said you know like i'm doing your receipts and i'm looking here like what are you trigger happy with tips <laughs> you need to slow down yeah. you need to you need to hold on to your coins i'm like yeah i know i was having a cocktail they were good them tip you know but I feel also that I was given a lot by so many people and, and, and you know, I lived really seriously, not on what a charmed life, and people will always give me. So for me to give, and when you give, you give, and it's not something you broadcast, 
you give share gives a lot by the way share um she yeah, does yeah. she does the uh when we were touring with her we were meeting uh children in the with the uh cleft palate the, the cleft lip the cleft lip yeah i remember that. Lip yeah. and uh mm -hmm. teenagers and she would uh they would show up to the show and they would take pictures with you know her and then of course the opening act that happened to be us and then she basically would sit them, put them up in the hotel, fly them in, pay for the operations, okay? Had them on, you know, sitting down in the front of the stage. I mean, she's a remarkable, remarkable woman. I also remember that not long ago, she did the uh, the her thing for helmets for soldiers. Oh, wow. That the helmets are just that. really crap, crap, you know. A lot of great people out there, and yeah. you, you and the group and yourself brought so many great music to us for the past 40 years. But you actually, you were talking about caring, and which is kind of cool, and we have about six minutes left. You got into something that really defines the word caring. You became an ordained minister, which I think is really cool and honorable, because you're going to be a part of people's history now when they fall in love at that moment at the altar again, and you're the, going to be the reason to tie them together for life. How does that feel when you do that's that? A, that's you remarkable and, and beautiful. Just a beautiful blessing in my life. I was ordained on 11-11-11, 2011, in Vegas by a couple that they were fans. And, uh, you know, she said that they, they, they came to the sound check and they said, oh, you know, we want to ordain and how does that work? And they said, well, you know, uh, we will you know, who wants to be ordained and the four of the members stepped back and only left me and the biker standing. And so, you know, we knelt and they, they officiated and all that and did the ceremony. And then a couple of weeks later, we received our, our uh, certificates. I'm up to 15 weddings. That's and I was just asked last night, would I do another wedding of a couple that I reintroduced to them? I reintroduced them to each other maybe over 10 years ago, and they are now asking me would I marry them. So I have I mean, very, I have several packages that I do. There's the native uh, native wedding with all of the native traditional gear and ribbon shirt and the stole and whatever, then the, the ribbon tying of the wrist. Not tying like that, folks. Not to tie it like that. Or the, or the suit with the blue tie, with the turquoise tie you know, more conservative, but um, yeah, I have a blast. I have a blast doing it. And I write all of my vows, I write for the couple. I meet with them a month or two before and I get information of how they met, what's their story together, and then I entwine that in with, with what's going on in the world. Wow, that's, that's really amazing. I mean, you know, I have been back a lot, but to hear that you went out, that got certificate, you know, certified, now you're helping people into their next life. That's so cool. And uh, I couldn't imagine the feeling every time you close that book, you see them kiss, knowing that you're the reason why they're stepping into their next I life. I know, you're going to make me cry now. But I always get them both, the couples, to always give me a, key, a kiss on each cheek. Um, oh, yeah. People can go to my website. It's being updated. FelipeRose.com. Yeah, FelipeRose.com, yeah, and uh, there's new music coming out, some new merchandising, and a video for the summer will uh, go like this, but it's likely, yes, you know, um, and basically the uh, Disco Chronicles on the Felipe Rose fan club channel on YouTube, and then, of mm -hmm. course, all of my... Uh, Friends, family, and my fans, and they uh, are always engaged with all the things I usually say. And when I do put up my foot in my mouth and get, you know, I'm, I'm trying to walk away from the negativity. I love that thing that the way you started the show, you know. Oh, thank you. What did you call that moment? Oh, re reality. Oh, reality. Yeah, I like that. Was that new today? Yeah. I, okay, I but, but I like that. There should be always a new reality. Yeah, I did. Check. I did. Uh, that was my seventh one. I decided to do a reality check segment. Nice, yeah. nice. And it, just, it pretty much hits like every day if I see something or hear something. Well, you tell me all the time because my I've got, I get really cuckoo fans. And, yeah, and, you're, and you're, like, you're like, you like tell me, don't go there, leave it alone. Ignore them. Ignore them. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you have such a positive spirit. 
the last thing you want is some stranger just to bring you down over a comment because they're just bored and they have nothing else to say. I mean, like I told you in a story, I had somebody call me a racist a couple of years ago, which is the funniest thing in the world because I'm a peace activist, a civil rights activist, and half of my ex-girlfriends are different nationality and races from all over the world. Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm a racist, you know who, then what the hell is he? <laughs> I was asked, I was asked, you know, um, you don't like black guys, do you? Because, you know, as a gay man, you know, I'm like, yeah, I like black guys. Are you sure you're not a racist? And the, the, this was like from someone that I knew. You, why are you asking me that? Well, you don't date black guys. I said, I haven't found the right one that I want. And where are yeah. the brothers? I don't know where the brothers are. <laughs> yeah. I said, find, yeah. me find me a juicy one, like the one in the... Yeah. And I thought, that, that's somebody, well, no, because yeah. I always see you with white guys. And I said, well, that's my preference. I, but I've also been with Latinos, you know, and I just felt yeah. like, wow, they can think in color like that. Um, yeah, people, I just like people just like to start drama for no reason. Yeah, this my family's so very nice. You, know, you saw my cousin yeah. training, uh, of course. Pistol Pete Dobson. He's my second cousin. You know, our families, we have black and uh, Dominican and Colombian and native and Italian. I mean, we're such a mix, my family. Yeah. I mean, I love Hawaiians, but the only reason why I've been dating a Hawaiian girl because I haven't been to Hawaii. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> it's, like, it's like people just like wars and drama. That's yeah, why I see yeah. everybody in you. At the end of the day, negative thoughts online, ignore it. Let it, you either yeah. ignore it, delete it, or let other people accept them. But on that note, Felipe, first of all, thank you for being on the final show, the regular season of FaceTime with Todd Morton. I do have one more show. It's a special show, but it's been such an honor to have you on. Guys, if you don't know, follow him at Felipe Rose, official on Instagram, FelipeRose.com, which I'm assuming you'll be able to get your, your show from there as well. Just click on the YouTube channel. Yes. And um, he's a music icon. Please, if you don't know, which you should, because somebody I think wrote in here, what hit songs have you had? And it's like, guys, YMCA, in the Navy, Macho Man. Uh, there's other the songs that I recorded on my YouTube channel as well. My other Nanny yeah. made of award-winning music. Um, exactly. So and thank you for having me, Todd. Music. It was great. I can't believe I actually revealed. We never talked about Caitlyn Jenner, but that's... We'll, 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 we'll talk about that on another show. Caitlyn Jenner was Bruce there. Jenner in the movie Can't Stop the Music. That's a long story. That is a long story. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Happy Friday. And it's May 1st, Mother's Day, hug your mom. Now, you, if you're vaccinated, go hug your mom. You know, mm -hmm. send your mom a kiss, a virtual call, Zoom. You know, we're heading into a, this really good moment in our lives where we now can go, hey, Rich Hennessy, uh, where we're going to be opening up again. And hopefully, if we get it right, we can, like, hang in there, you know? Yeah. I hopefully get it right. So, guys, well, we're, doing the get best, right. we're doing the best we can, you know? Yeah. Well, I always say to people, listen, guys, get it right. Keep wearing your mask. Keep practicing social distancing. Even when it's 100% up, still practice it because we want to make sure everything's good before we can fully go into winter and say, oh, everything's great. So keep doing that. Look out for your fellow men and women. Just look out for everybody. We're and Broadway. Everybody. I want to see Broadway back. You're coming to something with me. Oh yeah, I'm already working you on it. You and Keith Price. What? I'm worth, I have a story about that. We'll talk about okay. it. Todd, thank um, you. I love you, brother. Of course. And guys, uh, as I'm saying, we're speaking of Felipe Rose. And to give you an update on Sunday, I hope everybody's tuning in on Sunday. I have a special show that's going to end the season. It's a special show. It's Remembering DMX because I am going to be speaking with these guys right here, the three gentlemen that rode the monster truck in Memorial Day and organized that entire event, uh, the DMX Memorial Truck Team. So I'm honored to have them on. So guys, have a great weekend. Tune in this Sunday night at 7 p.m. We're going to have Remembering DMX Day. And like I always say at the end of the show, as always, if you're not living a passionate life, then whose life are you living? Guys, have a great night. And I like that. And I'll see you soon. Love you guys. Love you. All right.